Yes, I oh, have the Lord. mind of Christ shine through wisdom. So anytime we come for Bible lessons like this, what do we come with, children? What do we come with? Oh, oh Bible. Bibles. Can you please show me your Bible? See mine? It's always here. It's always here. Daniel, Esther, you're welcome. Nathaniel, you're welcome. Yes, I can see your Bible, Abigail. And Anna. yes, I can see your Bible, Daniel. The only one now has, yes. I can see the Bible, Moriano. Yes, I can see. If you look at Mushope, where's your Bible? I can Sophia, you're welcome. Thank you. I can see your Bible. Who again? Ray, Ray, where's your Bible? Zana and Daron, it's good to see you. You're welcome. I'm you. You're welcome. Where's your Bible? Okay, I can see your Bible. Yeah, Abolu Warriors, you're welcome. Yes, yes, <laughs> Okay, all right. Thank you for always coming with your Bible. If you know you joined with the name Samsung Galaxy Tab, please let me know you are. So that you change. All right, thank you. Let's say a word of prayer. Let's say a word of prayer as we start today. Hello. Is that okay? Hello. Let's say a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you for a time of Bible lesson like well, this. Let's... Thank you for bringing thank us Jesus. together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace at work in our lives. Thank you for life. Yeah. Thank you for sustainability. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the grace to gather again today. Lord, we say we are grateful. As we are here, Lord, speak to our hearts. Reveal yeah. Jesus to us through our, uh, our topic today, that at the end of the day, we'll all be blessed. Speak through me to the heart of every <coughs> listen to this message now or later. And Father, I receive your strength for today's teaching. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Yeah. We want to say welcome to some special yeah. people. Those are viewers on Facebook, viewers on YouTube. Thank you for joining and thank you for always joining. We love you. And we know that God has something in store for you also today. All right. Come along with us as we start. Today, this month, we are talking about I have the mind of Christ. Everybody say this. Say, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. All right. I have the mind of Christ. Thank you. So today we'll be talking on shine through wisdom. Shine through wisdom. All right. Uh, we'll be calling on some set of people to read the book, book, uh, book of First Kings chapter 4. If you are there, just say your name so that you can read for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, David. Yeah, who is that? Oh, Lord, oh, yeah. David. Okay, David. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I have told me just prayed for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, okay. No, no. that's 29. That's six. Let me see. Maria I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are complete. So I have told me love by David, Reoluwa, Tehila, the Ajibo, one of the Ajibolas, and Moriano. So are you there already? So you read just a verse each. So we'll be starting with Tommy Loba. First Kings chapter 4. From verse 29. I just read the verse. Tell me, lover. 4 verse 29 to 34 says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sun that is on this issue. Thank you. All right, uh, David, read verse 30. All and right. Solomon wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Okay, 31, Rere Oluwa. Yes, where's Rere? Verse 31. For he was wiser than all other men, 
wiser than even the, the as as wise and have alcohol in order to the mountain. Paris is dead. Was in all the nations round about. Okay, thank you. Verse thirty-two, Tehila. Tehila, verse thirty-two. He also on on three thousand proverbs, and he somewhere a thousand and five. So long, I saw it. Okay, verse thirty-three. Verse thirty-three, the Ajibolas. And the fake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, every even unto Isaac that springeth out of the wall, wall is spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. Thank you, verse thirty-four. Moriano. From all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. All right. Thank you, everybody that uh, read out the scripture uh, for us right now. So this story is actually talking about King Solomon, about his wisdom, about people from different angles coming to learn, to hear, to sit down and hear him speak because he was filled with wisdom. We'll still go to this uh, Bible verse in our next slide. So just come along with me as we go about uh, today's lesson. All right. This is King Solomon. It's a picture of King Solomon. Can you see King Solomon? All right, everybody. I want to ask a question. What do you know about King Solomon? What do you know about him? Anybody? King he is wise. He's a man of wisdom. He's a man of wisdom. He's a man of wisdom. He's wise. okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's wise. Thank you. Then one of the Abolu worries. What do you have to say? Talk. I don't want to say. He's a king. He's a wise king. He's a wise Okay, he's a king and he's wise. Okay, the Ajibola's hand is raised. What do you have to say about him? He was the son of David. King he David. was the son of King David. Okay. He has excellent wisdom. He has ex uh, uh, excellent wisdom. Wow. Okay. He was, a king. he was a king. Yes. And he was very rich. He was very what? He's the son of David. Okay. Yes, he was very rich. Thank you. Thank you. So the visitors are welcome. Big fire, your midday of holy chipwe talu. The holy days are welcome. Naomi, you welcome. Confidence and grace, you welcome. All right. So you've said so many things about King Solomon. You said he's a king. He's wise. He was the wisest king on earth. He's the son of King David. He said he was the wisest king, king on earth. Okay, the wisest king on earth. Wow. He dealt with people wisely. We dealt with people wisely. Wow, those are big words. David and Zion. Yes. What you have to say? The temple of the God. Much. Okay, build the temple words. of God. Yeah. Good. <gasps> Teach people why people came from yeah. People came from afar to hear of his wisdom. Good. Wow. That means you know so much about King David, the people for your country, about King Solomon. Thank you so much for your contributions. Now, now what you have to say? Let's see what we have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So you can be muted now. Let's let's say what we have to say about King Solomon. Yeah, he said Solomon was the third king of Israel. The first king of Israel was King Saul. The second king was King David, and Solomon was the third king. Somebody said Solomon was the son of King David. So that person is correct. So he's the third king of Israel, which who is the uh, the son of David, King David, and Solomon was the ma wisest man ever. He was very wise. Also, Solomon was the wealthiest man ever. He was very wealthy. 
Sorry for that. He was very wealthy. He's the wealthiest man ever. So, but today we want to talk about just one of the attributes of King Solomon, and that is his wisdom. We want to talk about his wisdom. First Kings chapter four that we read, First Kings chapter four that we read, talked about Solomon's wisdom. Let's read it now. He said, God gave Solomon wisdom, very great insights and understanding as vast as the sand on the seashore. So he was not just wise, he had great insight and he had understanding. He said Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East, greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. That means the people of the East are wise. Remember, uh, for those that were uh, on King's Show Bible Club last year, when we talk about the Magi that came to visit Jesus, where did they come from? Can you remind me? They came from the Egypt. Egypt. From the east. They came from yeah. the east. That means that the Bible recognized people from the east as very wise. But now the Bible says Solomon's wisdom is even greater than their wisdom. Wow. And now also that means Egypt too is full of wisdom. But the Bible says Solomon's wisdom is still greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. They say Solomon composed 3,000 proverbs. Wow. Then Solomon also composed 1,005 songs. He described trees, you know, in his proverbs, in his songs, from Cedar and Lebanon to the east of growing out of the wall. He also taught about animals, birds, reptiles, fish, and we said people from everywhere in the world came sent by every king on earth who had of Solomon's wisdom, they came around to listen to Solomon's wisdom. Solomon was the king that was known worldwide. All the continents of the world heard about the wisdom of Solomon. And kings of nations were sending people to go just to go and listen to Solomon's wisdom. Children, I want to ask a question. Who wants to be like Solomon? Me, oh, wow. I don't want to be like Solomon. Wow. Hey, everybody wants to be like Solomon. You want to be very wise. Wow. And you want to be wealthy, right? Wow. Wow. So, wow. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Everybody wants to be like in Solomon. Now, Second Chronicles chapter nine, verse one says, "Now, when Queen, the Queen of Sheba, heard about the fame of Solomon, she came to test him with difficult questions. You can meet yourself now. Thank you." She came to test him with difficult questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very large caravan with camels bearing spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. So this is the queen of Sheba. He heard about the fame of Solomon and came bearing gifts. So she came to Solomon and spoke with him about all that was on her mind. They said she came to test King Solomon with difficult questions. So she had prepared all the difficult questions she was coming to ask King Solomon that, hey, let's see if we'll be able to answer this question. But you know what happened? As soon as she met Solomon, the King Solomon answered all her questions, leaving nothing out. Nothing was too hard for King Solomon to explain to Queen Sheba. That was how wise King Solomon was. Even the toughest questions, he was still able to answer it and answer it correctly. That was the kind of wisdom God gave to Solomon. But children, do you know what? I have news for you. What is the news? For queen, the queen of Sheba came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And now one greater than Solomon is here. That's what the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 42 be says. He said, now we have someone that is greater than King Solomon. Who can tell me? Who do we have now that is greater than King Solomon? Who? Jesus. Jesus. Solomon, and that is Jesus Christ. And today we will be studying about who Jesus is. I will ask all Jesus questions. Jesus Christ, even gave Solomon wisdom. 
Oh, even gave Solomon wisdom. Thank you for that. All right. So why study about King Solomon? When we have someone greater than King Solomon that we can talk about today. So we want to talk about someone greater than King Solomon and learn wisdom from him. All right, come along with me. The scripture says, let's talk about this Jesus. Let's talk about this Jesus. Let's talk about this one. This Jesus that is greater than Solomon. Let's talk about it. When he was a boy, the Bible says, when he was a boy at age 12, he was once left behind at the temple. He was forgotten. He was left behind. They didn't know. He, the parents didn't know he was not with them. So he was left behind in the temple with some adult teachers and great mind. And the scripture says that after three days, that they went back looking for Jesus. After three days, looking for him. After three days, they found Jesus, the boy Jesus, so 12-year-old boy Jesus. They found him in the temple, sitting among teachers listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard they were astonished they were surprised eh? they were overwhelmed and bewildered uh, with wonder at his intelligence and understanding and his replies they wonder how did a small boy like this have this kind of knowledge have this kind of understanding about the word of god even scholars even the older ones the elders the teachers of the law they have no such understanding of the word of God. But this boy, Jesus, 12-year-old Jesus, at his age, he had a sound knowledge of the word of God. And even the older ones were perplexed, were surprised about the kind of wisdom he has. Luke chapter 2, verse 46 to 47 told us about this. So imagine the elders, imagine the teachers of the law, imagine, you know, those old professors opening their books, journals and dictionaries to check and confirm what the boy Jesus was saying. And as they were opening their book, it was sticky. It was correct. Correct. This little boy is really correct. Too. The way he's saying it, eh, it's just exactly as it is written in the, in the book of the law, in the scroll that we have. They were checking and it was correct. And Colossians chapter 2, verse 3 says, In Jesus are eating all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He said, In Jesus, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are eating in Jesus. Okay, now, this Jesus again, when he was older, fasted for 40 days. And when he fasted for 40 days, after on the 40th day, something happened. The devil came to him. He said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Can you see the devil talking to Jesus? Children, if you fast, anyone, have you fasted before? How do you feel when you fast? How do you feel? Hungry. Oh, I feel weak. Hungry. Hungry. Weak. So weak. Good. Someone says weak. Hungry. Some of you will even fast to 12. And it will be like, oh, my tummy wants to cut. Can I please eat? Please, please, please. Just the 12 o'clock. Can you imagine? But this time, Jesus fasted for 40 days. Maybe he only took liquid. Maybe he only took water for the 40 days. Imagine how weak Jesus would have been. That was way over a month. Imagine that. Fasting. Not eating, not eating food. You see? And on the 40th day, imagine the devil came as weak as Jesus was. And he says, if you are the son of God, tell the stones to become bread. But you know what? What was written originally in the scripture? Let's see what was written. What was written in the scripture in Matthew chapter 3 verse 17 says, you know, before Jesus came, uh, was tempted by the devil, he was baptized by John the Baptist. And when he was baptized, as he was being lifted up from the water, they said, a dove came upon him. The Holy Spirit came as a dove upon him. And a voice was heard from heaven that says, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. That is the word of God. The word of God says Jesus is the son. He, and he loves him. But now, the devil is saying, if you are the son of God, is he not the son of God? Why must he prove that he's the son of God? Because he's already the son of God. And even Jesus, and even God the father, had confirmed it. And God the father, we will say, he loves him so much, whom I love. But the devil wanted to test him. But Jesus could read through the lines and Jesus replied to the devil and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus replied to the devil with the word. He said, no, you can't tempt me with this word because I know who I am. 
I know my father loves me. So you cannot tempt me. He said, no, every, every man, uh, you don't live by bread alone, but from the word, uh, every word that comes from the mouth of God. And what is the word that comes from the mouth of God? That I'm, I am somebody he loves. I am his son and he loves me and he's pleased with me. And all, that is all that Jesus needs to know. So next, the devil knew you had failed that first, at that first attempt. Next, the devil took Jesus to the top of the temple, very tall building, and told him, jump down, saying, it is written, he, God, will command his angels concerning you. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. The devil was quoting scripture to Jesus that said it is written. Let's see what the scripture actually said from where devil quoted from. In Psalm 91 verse 11 to 12, that was where the devil quoted. But let's see the full verse. He said, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. The devil did not quote that. He said, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. The devil just speak the second part of the scripture and quoted it. But because God was vast in knowledge, Jesus was wise. He had the knowledge of the word of God. So he was able to say, no, this is not what God says. God says he will command the angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Was it Jesus' ways before then to be jumping uh, down from tall buildings? Did you read in the Bible that ah, Jesus jumped from one tall building, the next day jumped from another tall building? Oh, he's the, uh, he's the, he's the best jumper in the world. Was it said about Jesus? No, it wasn't oh. said about him. That means it was not Jesus' oh. way to be jumping on, uh, jumping down from tall buildings. Oh. Remember, the Bible says He will command His angel concerning you to guard you in all your ways. So if Jesus had gone to jump, that would be Him tempting God. Why will He jump? Because that was not Jesus' way. It was not Jesus' way to jump. Wow! As if Jesus jumped, you now not be able to do the work of oh, God. God. Yes, because that will be him tempting God and that will be foolishness on his part. So Jesus read through the night and said, no, devil, you cannot tempt me. He said, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to test. So Jesus in his wisdom also shuts the devil up by saying, no, do not put your, the Lord your God to test because the Lord your God, the Lord your God says that the Lord God says he will guard me in all my ways. So don't let me, I can't test my God by going to jump off the, the building. I will definitely fall because that is not my way. And that was how Jesus was able to shut the devil up again. And what happened? Jesus was so wise that even the devil couldn't handle him. And the devil had to leave Jesus alone because he knew that, uh-uh, this man is just too wise for my liking. And he left him. And not just the devil, not just, it was not only the devil that tested Jesus. Several groups of people would also come to test Jesus while he was on earth. One day, the Sadducees came to test Jesus also. Sadducees are a group that did not believe that man could rise again after death. They don't believe that man could rise again after death. They said, mm, let's use this knowledge that we have. Let's use it to test Jesus. Maybe Jesus will fall into our trap. So they came up with a very silly story, a very foolish story. Listen to the story, children. The man came and said, hey, Jesus, Rabbi. See, Rabbi means teacher. He said, a woman marries a man, then the man dies, and the spirit goes to heaven. Can you see the woman that marries a man? Then the man dies, he goes to heaven. He said, she remarries again. She remarries, and the husband dies again, and went to heaven. She remarries again. The husband dies, and went to heaven. This woman remarried again. The fourth husband died, and went to heaven. She remarried again. The husband died, and went to heaven. She remarried again. The husband died and went to heaven. See her. She remarried yet again. The husband died and went to heaven. And this time, this woman herself also died. How many husbands did this woman have? How many husbands did she marry while on, did she marry while on earth? Seven. 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 Seven.
Who will be her husband? Who will she say that is her husband? Is remember she married to seven women. Let's listen to what God, uh, Jesus, replied. Her Jesus first husband. Christ. Jesus was saying, "Hey, I there some people that are still thinking like this." He was surprised at their level of ignorance. Oh, these people don't even know anything. And Jesus replied. Jesus said, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. He said, in heaven, there is no marriage. You can, you, are, you wouldn't get to heaven and be married to your the husband. I said, ah, that was my husband on earth. Then when you get to heaven, that's say, oh, he's my husband. He said, no. So things don't happen in heaven. He said, in heaven, we will all be like the angels in heaven. We're even greater than the angels, you know. So that was how Jesus answered the Sadducees. When the Sadducees couldn't get Jesus, hmm, that was how Jesus got the uh, Sadducees. So when the Sadducees couldn't go get Jesus, another group called the Pharisees decided to give it a trial also. The Pharisees are a group of people that believe that they know the laws of Moses more than anyone else. So they came up with a question. They chose the best of them to come and ask Jesus a question because they wanted to put him to test and set him up in a trap, put him in a trap. So the man said, excuse me, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Remember then, they had so many commandments of Moses and part of it were the 10 commandments. Thou shall not kill you, thou shall not lie, thou shall not covet your neighbor's wife, thou shall not covet your neighbor's house. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. You know, all these were part of the Ten Commandments. So they wanted to, they wanted to trap Jesus and say, let's see the one that Jesus will say is the greatest of these commandments. And you know what Jesus replied? Jesus said, number one of the greatest commandments. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Then number two, secondly, he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wow. Love your labor as yourself. That was the way Jesus answered this Pharisee. The Pharisee was expecting him to pick from the Ten Commandments. Then they can argue and say, why will you say this one is greater than this? But Jesus, remember, he was filled with wisdom. He was filled with wisdom. So he was able to answer with wisdom. And he was able to shut the Pharisee up. So because they couldn't get him, all of them stopped bothering Jesus. They feel, oh, this one is just too wise. We can't just get him. We can't just trap him. He's just too wise. As if he knows where we are going before we even ask the question. And they stop bothering Jesus. Children, do you know that you already have the mind of Christ? Do you know that as children of God, you have the mind of Christ? I have the mind of Christ. We all have the mind of Christ as children of God. But we have the mind of Christ. It's, we have been told that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 b and you are also wise as Jesus. First John chapter 4, verse 7 says, because as he is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Children, as Jesus is wise, we are wise. You are wise. As a child of God, you are wise. So you can win over your opponents. Luke chapter 21, verse 15 says, I will give you the wisdom to know what to say. None of your enemies will be able to oppose you or say that you are wrong. The Bible says it will give you wisdom. You can win your opponents. Just like, you know, people came to question Jesus just to trap him. And they couldn't get to him because of he was filled with God's wisdom. God says that kind of wisdom he has given to you too. So that none of your enemies will be able to oppose you or say that you are wrong. Because you will be wise. You will know where they are going before they even start. And you answer them correctly and they won't be able to trap you. What then is wisdom? Wisdom is the gift of God that helps you to know how, when, and where to put knowledge into action. Let's see. That means knowledge. Let's say you learn this in school. One plus one is two. What is wisdom? Wisdom means when you go to the market and you take one mango and another mango, then you get what? Two mangoes. It means if you give your customer money for mangoes, he will say, oh, you just paid for two and give you two mangoes. That is wisdom. Wisdom is saying when you have yellow plus blue is green. Oh, you were taught in school that yellow plus blue, that's knowledge. Yellow plus blue equals to green. You, your teacher taught you in school that yellow plus blue equals to green. And you have your house. You want to paint your house, but you don't have a green paint in your house. But 
you have the yellow and blue paint. What is the wisdom there? Wisdom is the one that will tell you, oh, I don't need to go out and buy a green paint. I say, oh, I only have yellow and blue paint. I don't have a green paint. Let me go out and go and buy a green paint. No. Wisdom is you remembering that, oh, my teacher taught me in school that if I mix yellow and blue together, I can get green. So now that I have yellow and blue paint, I can mix it together and it will give me the green color that I want. And what do you do? You mix the paints together and it will give you the green color and you can color your house the color you want it. So that is you translating the knowledge that you are being taught and using wisdom to analyze it and make it work in your day-to-day -day life. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Maybe that day you read your Bible and you read Psalm 23 verse 1 and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How can you apply this? That means when thoughts comes to you of lack, and when thoughts of lack, I say, oh, I don't have money to pay for what did my teacher say we should bring money tomorrow to pay for a class. And the mommy says she doesn't have the money. When that thought comes to your head, then you can say, no, the Lord is my shepherd. I cannot, I shall not want. So what does that mean? I have all that I need. That means God will provide the money that I want because the Bible has said that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want everything I need. God will provide. That is you translating the knowledge of God that you have and the wisdom of God making it work through the wisdom that God has given to you. So you have to increase in knowledge for wisdom to show fully. The more you increase in knowledge, the more you also grow in wisdom. When you increase the knowledge, your wisdom what grows. It shows fully. All right, let's go ahead. Sorry. Okay, a Bible verse. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. What is he telling us? For you to have the mind of Christ, you have no fear. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear. So what does that mean? It means that face it. Wherever you have that subject in school and you know you're half afraid, say, oh, oh, I just don't seem to understand this subject. Say, God has not given you the spirit of fear. You have the mind of Christ. You are wise. God has made you wise. That means that wherever they are calling on the best ten in your country, you are there. The best thing in your neighborhood, in your community, you are there. Whatever they are calling on people that is representing your school in other schools, you are there because you are full of God's wisdom. You do not fear anything. You attack it face on. Anytime you notice fear, that is not the spirit of God. That is the spirit of the devil. It's the devil that places fear in the hearts of children of God. Fear is not of God at all because the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. So it is not God. Fear is not God. When you say, oh, I'm afraid of something, then that's, being afraid is not God. He said, because God has given us what? The what? Spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. So the spirit that God has given to us is of power. You are powerful children. As Jesus is, so you are in this world. As Jesus is strong, so are you. As Jesus is white, so are you. As Jesus is smart, so are you. As Jesus is filled with knowledge, so are you. As Jesus is filled with understanding, so are you. God comes, gives you the total package of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding. And he makes you the best at what you do. So as children of God, you are the best at what you do. Because you have the mind of Christ. You have a sound mind. That is what the scripture is telling you today. Yes. So children, say after me, say, as Jesus is, so am I. Say that. Say that. Say, as Jesus is, children. Okay, so am I. Okay, as Jesus is, as Jesus is, as Jesus is, as as so, um, as Jesus is wise, as Jesus is wise, as Jesus is wise, as Jesus is healthy, as Jesus is healthy, so am I. 
Side of you, and that is who you are. You are wise, you are wealthy, you are strong, you are healthy. So, whatever it is, if you are feeling down right now, you can say, As Jesus is healthy, so am I. As Jesus is strong, so am I. Because Jesus, God has given you the, the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. I want you to bow your heads wherever you are, children, and just begin to say, Thank you. Thank you because you have not given me the spirit of fear, uh, thank the spirit you. of power, the spirit of love, the spirit of sound mind. Begin to say, Lord, I, Father, thank, I you. thank you for not giving me. Lord, I thank you for children that are in Christ. You say thank Lord, you to Lord, me Lord, because Lord, God has given you this. Lord, this Lord, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Enjoy. But if you are here, children, Lord, I have told you Jesus Lord, to come into your life. You've not even given your life to Jesus before. Lord, Claim Lord, what is for somebody that you don't even know. It's not possible. So if you are here, you've not told Jesus to come into your life because this is the right time to do it. You say, Lord, I just want to be like you, but I can't even be like you if I don't know you. Have come like to you. Oh Lord, I wish you to be like you. Lord, I wish you to be like you. Every form of sin and unrighteousness. Lord, I accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Bless me, oh Lord. Bless me. And Lord, take me in as your child. So that I can enjoy all the great benefits that you have given me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, because I have the mind of Christ right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the death of Jesus on the cross. Thank you because I have thank you. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. I just said this prayer. I want to say congratulations Amen. to you. You are now a child of God. And you also, you now have the mind of Christ. That will help you stand out in all that you do. Let's say a word of prayer together. Father, we thank you for every child that has joined today on Zoom, everyone watching on Facebook and on YouTube right now. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, for reminding us again that we have the mind of Christ and we shine through wisdom that as Jesus is, so are we. If Solomon was considered in his days that he was the wisest of all, the wealthiest of all, now, how much more now that we have someone greater than Solomon who is there, and that is Jesus. And the scripture has told us that as Jesus is, so are we. So we are greater than King Solomon. In wisdom, we are greater. In wealth, we are greater. Father, we decree, we begin to live in this reality of who we are in Christ Jesus from now onwards. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to live below our person in Christ. We refuse to live below who we are in Christ. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. We have sound minds. We have the spirit of love. We are powerful, but we are great. We are strong because Christ has given us all of those things. Thank you because he said wisdom is gotten from you and not from anybody else. Wisdom comes from above. Father, thank you because you have given to us wisdom. We go out from today onwards and live in this reality. We refuse to live below it anymore. In the name of Jesus, we refuse to be afraid of anything anymore. Not the subjects we do in school. Not our skills in physical mm -hmm. development activity. Wherever we find ourselves. Not hey, in learning man. a skill. In everything we do, we stand out because we have the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father, for this reality. Thank you, Father, for we know this is what we are in you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all for being back. Uh, thank you all. I believe we have gained something. We said, I have the mind of Christ. As Jesus is children, so are you. So when you see anything that is negating that, then you say no to it. And anytime you feel, oh, I'm not feeling too fine. You say, as Jesus is, so am I. Jesus is healthy, so I am healthy. Huh? Jesus is strong, so I am strong. Or maybe an exa in an examination and you seem not to remember, you say, no, as Jesus is, so am I. Jesus has retentive memory and remembers everything he has been taught and answer questions correctly. So I remember and answer questions correctly. Yes, who has a question? Someone is saying, Nancy, what's your question? Ma, I have a question. Ma, if we did yes. in the shot, and you say, as Jesus is, so am I. So I'm watching. Will this will this work? Please ask again. Your network is fluctuating. Please ask okay. again. Okay, what is this examination? I can read that. I think is so am I. Will it work? Oh, I read. Yes. It, wisdom works with knowledge. Wisdom doesn't work alone. So if you get to an, get to an examination. Of, when you do not read. Ah, when you did not read, you're on your own. Wisdom works with knowledge. Wisdom works with knowledge. You have the knowledge of what you want to do. Then God gives you wisdom. How was Jesus as a boy able to uh, teach teachers? How? Because he had the knowledge of the law of God. He had the knowledge of the scrolls. What was written in the scrolls, in the law of God. Jesus had the knowledge of it. That was how he could be able to teach them in wisdom. So wisdom works with knowledge. He will say, as Jesus is, so am I. And you go into the examination without reading your book. Ha! That is foolishness. <laughs> that is not wisdom. It is Ma, a question. You don't do that. So if you want wisdom to work, then you must, you must question. work. Okay, I will answer. It must work with knowledge. So you must read your book. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you go to the examination, you have read your book, but you just forget. You just get to them and you say, oh, I read this book, but I forgot it. At that moment, you just say, as Jesus sees, so am I. Jesus remembers. He has retentive memory. He answers questions correctly. He remembers what he has read. I remember what I have read just now by the help of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Oh and you just God. see that. You will remember again and you're able to answer your questions correctly. Is that Okay. All right, have Ma, I answered your question? Yes, to the next question. The next person that has a question, yes. what's your question? Ma, I have a question. Blossom. Blossom, what's your question? What about if you say that you, you don't, you are not, you are not like Jesus and you get sick, what will happen to you next? And you get sick? No, as a child of God, as Jesus is, so are you. So anytime sickness comes, you see, you know, we talked about it in our previous teaching that you say, no, in Jesus name, my body is the temple of God. I am made whole in my body. I am strong because that is who I am in Christ Jesus. So you say no to it as a sickness out of this body in Jesus name. You command it out in Jesus name and it will obey you because you have the mind of Christ. And as Jesus is, so are you. Jesus is strong and healthy. So whenever there is sickness in your body, and I'm talking to Kara right now, Kara is feeling strong right now. So Kara, speak to it yourself and say, as Jesus is, so am I. As Jesus is LD, I'm LD. Sickness, you have a, no place in my body right now. So I'm sending sickness out of my body right now. In Jesus' name, it will obey you because you have the authority in Christ. Remember when we talk about authority in Jesus. And yes, if you are beginning your if you are beginning your medication, because I know your parents will give you medication, you finish it. It's not the one that you skip it. And your mom will say, take your medication. Oh, I don't like medicine. And you know, you know, finish your medication. And as you're taking your medication, you speak life into your body and send that sickness out. It's your baby. What is medication? You have your medicine. What is medication? Your medicine. Your medicine that you take when you're not feeling too fine. Medicine that mommy gets from the hospital. When you go see the doctor, oh. is that okay? Or mom and dad? 
<laughs> All right. Have I answered your question? I have a question. Yes. What's your question? Ask your why question. Did, why yeah? did Jesus fast for forty days? Why did Jesus? He needed it because he, he had the ministry to run. He had some. He had the ministry. He was on earth for a purpose, and he needed that prayer and fasting to help him. To energize him for the work that he has ahead. Why did Jesus come to earth? He come to heal the sick, to raise the dead. He come to reveal the love of the Father to the people. And do you know that if he comes for all of this, the devil will not take it lightly with him. The devil will want to oppose him. Is that not it? That is why he needed to draw strength from his Father in heaven. And that was part of why he fasted. Because he needed the strength for his ministry on earth. So he had to start his ministry by waiting on God so that he can gather the strength and the power to be able to run. And so many times we do that too. Even myself as your teacher, I dedicate times when I take time out to fast and pray for you children. Yes, so that God will continue to guide you in all his ways and make you the, to be the best in your various schools, in your various homes, in your various communities, in your various countries. Yes, in your various uh, society. Yes, we have to pray. Because when we teach like this, then we back it up with God's prayer so that it can help you go far. We need it. Anybody running one ministry or the other, you need the help of God. And that was part of the reason why Jesus fasted and fasted for 40 days. Have I answered your question? Have I? Have I answered your question? He's muted. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, any other question? Do we have any other question? No. No, all right. Okay. Uh, uh, in absence of any other question, quickly, let me quickly say this to our Facebook audience and to our YouTube audience. People joining us on Facebook and on YouTube, we want to say thank you for being part of today's Bible lesson. I will believe you have gained one thing or the other from today's teaching. Yes, we always have lessons to teach the children and we always challenge ourselves to go out there to live out, out what we are being taught. So as you go out in this new week that we are entering into, this weekend and the new week we are entering into, remember that you have the mind of Christ and you shine through wisdom. And remember, wisdom works with knowledge. So don't act foolishly. Ah. Build knowledge. That is why school is important, children. School is, you don't go to school to just go and waste it. Why am I going to school? So that you can grow in knowledge. Because as you grow in knowledge, you grow in wisdom. Eh? You see how important school is now? As you grow in knowledge, you grow in wisdom. As you apply yourself to knowledge, as you grow in knowledge, you acquire things, you read things, uh, you learn things, then you grow in wisdom. As you learn skill, that is knowledge, you grow in wisdom. So it is very important as you go out this week, remember you have the mind of Christ. God loves you as Jesus is, so are you. If you have been blessed by today's teaching for our viewers on Facebook and YouTube, please remember to like and share this video so that you can be a blessing to others. Because the more you share, the more people can be rich with the knowledge of the Father's love for them and the more better life we all live as children of god all right then you can also subscribe to our youtube channel for those joining me on youtube and those on facebook please go and subscribe to that youtube channel so that you can always know what will come up live and you will not miss classes and if you want to register your children to be members of kids show bible club so that they can also join us on zoom ask questions and also enjoy Great benefits, other benefits we have as members. Please, it should be attached to this video www.kingstrombibleclub.org forward slash register. You can register your children, it is totally free. Thank you all for always joining. Thank you for being part of today's lesson. We love you. And, children, this is the time we say bye to our Facebook audience and our YouTube audience. Say bye to them as we. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.